Starting in the middle of the Aflam Dalid, we had quotes the next part of the Mishnah, where it spoke about the Aveda of the Kain Godla, Yom Kippur, and then it actually speaks about the Ketairas every day in the Beis HaMikdash. So it said in the Mishnah that every day in the Beis HaMikdash, the, in the afternoon, so the Ketairas in Bein Arbayim, what does it say? Vishal Bein Arbayim Hoisekreva Bein Eivadim Linesachim. When did they bring the Ketairas? It was brought, actually I, I skipped one part, let's go back up, sorry about that. Uh, did, I, did we learn yesterday the Ketayda Shal Shachar? Uh, we did learn it, yeah, we learned it yesterday. Okay, good, so good, very good, okay. So Shalbein Arbayim, in the afternoon, it was brought when? Between the Eivarim and the Nesachim. So the Gemara wants to know why specifically between the Eivarim and the Nesachim. Minan Emili, what's the source for this? Amr Rav Yechanan, Rav Yechanan says, the Makra, because the Pasuk says, Kemincha Saboyker Keniska Itase, that it should be brought like the Mincha in the morning and like the Nesachim in the morning. So in other words, the way it's brought in the afternoon should be similar to the way it's brought in the morning. Ma Mincha Sabaiker Ketaires Kedemes L'Nesachim So just like in the morning, so the Ketaires comes before the Nesachim. Afkan Ketaires Kedemes L'Nesachim So too in the afternoon, the Ketaires comes before the Nesachim. So the Gemara asks, wait a minute, if you're comparing it to the morning, in the morning, the Ketairis comes before the Eivarim. The Ketairis is brought right after they cleaned out the Menaira, before the parts of the Eivarim that are brought on the Mizbeach. Afkan, so too in the afternoon, I should say, that the Ketairis should come before the Eivarim. So why does it say in the Mishnah that it's after the Eivarim, before the Nesachim? So the Gemara answers, no, miksiv ke eivare abayker. Does it say in the Pasuk that, in the, that the eivarim in the afternoon are brought at the same time that the eivarim in the morning are? Keminchas abayker ksev. It only says keminchas abayker. Keminchas abayker veloi ke eivare abayker. The, the mincha is brought at the same time like the morning, but the eivarim are actually brought later, not the way it was brought in the morning. So therefore I know that the ketaydes comes between the eivarim and the nesachim. Taner Rabbanam, in Abraisa we learned regarding the amount of wine that's poured on the Mizbeach. So in the Pasuk, when we say every day, it says, Beniskoi Reviyas Ahin, that the amount of wine is a Reviyas Ahin. And then, where is this Pasuk written? So now she says, if you look simply in the context of the Pasuk, this amount, Beniskoi Reviyas Ahin, it says in the Pasuk, after it speaks about Hakeves Hasheni Tasa Ben Arbayim. After it says about the carbon Tamid that we bring in the afternoon. So therefore, the first opinion in the Braise says, Yilmet shal shachris mishalavis. We learn the amount of wine that's used for the carbon tomet shal shachar from what it says in the Pasuk regarding the tomet shal bein arbayim, which is the Revi Yisahin. But Rabbi Yomer, Rabbi says, no, the reverse is true. Arvis mishal shachris. We learn the afternoon, how much wine is to be brought in the afternoon from what's brought in the morning. Because Rabbi understands that when it says this amount in the Pasuk, it's actually speaking about the Tomit Shal Shachar. And therefore we learn the Tomit of the afternoon from the morning. So the Gemara asks the question on Rabbi, now Bishlei Mele Rabbanon, according to the Rabbanon, we understand why he's saying that this Pasuk is written regarding the Tomit Shal Ben Arbaim, because Hai Bet Tomit Shal Ben Arbaim Ksiv, look in the Pasuk, you'll see, it says, <laughs> it says that after it speaks about Hakeve Sasheni, the one that's brought in the afternoon, but Elo, El Rabbi, but according to Rabbi, in my time, why is Rabbi saying that this Pasuk is speaking about the Tomit in the morning, and we're learning the Tomit of the afternoon from the morning? <laughs> answers, because the Pasik over here, when it says the Niska Yain Sehin, what does it say? La keves for one of the kvasim, for one of the lambs that are brought for the Tamid. Which one is it speaking about? So even though on the simple pshat of the Pasik, it, it's talking about that one brought in the afternoon, but because it says keves ha echod, so he darshans as follows. Ezehu keves shenema boy echod, regarding which keves does the Taita say echod? Havi oimer zeh tomit shal shachar. This refers to the tomit in the morning. As Rashi quotes, the Pasik uses the term, in the, the top Rashi it says, as ha keves echod tase babayker. So only regarding the carbon tomit, does the Torah use the term Echot? So therefore he understands here as well, in this Pasuk when it says Veniska Yayin Revi'a Sehin, and it says in that Pasuk the term Kevesa Echot, it's speaking about the carbon that's brought in the morning. So it's the Talmud Shal Shachar. The Rabbonon, now according to the Rabbonon, my Echot, this word Echot seems to be extra. Why does it say the word Echot? Miyuchot Shebe'edre. The word Echot is coming to say that when you bring a carbon Talmud in the morning, you should bring it from the best Amongst the animals, in the in the 
the eider of the animals. That's so echad means the best one. Rabbi, according to Rabbi, how does he know that you should be bringing from the best? You don't need this pasik because there's another place. You learn it out from this that it says, from the best, you should bring your nedarim. When you make a vow to bring a carbon, you should bring from your best. The Rabbanon, the Rabbanon, why did they, they, do they, they not learn it out from that pasik? The answer is chad b'chayve and v'chad b'nedave. One pasik is speaking about a carbon which is an obligation and it's saying to bring the best, that's a keves ha'echod, <coughs> and v'chad b'nedave. That pasik mivcha nedorecha is speaking about a, a carbon that a person donates. And then the Gemara adds, it's srichi, and I need both psukim. Rashi here says that there's a svara to say by each one of them. There's a svara to say that if you're bringing a, your own donation, so then you should bring something beautiful. Don't bring a donation which is just this animal that's very shvach, that's very uh, not, not good quality. So there's a svara to say that a donation has to be nice. On the other hand, there's, an, uh, there's a svara to say that something which is an obligation. So you have to pay up properly, pay up fully. So therefore, the Torah has to say both times that you should bring from the best. The next thing it said on the Mishnah was, If the Kohen Gadol was old or he was very delicate, so they had to put pieces of metal, hot metal, into the water to sort of take away the coldness, the chill of the mikveh. Tanya Omer Rav So Rav Yudah said, What were they? Ashashiyah shal barzel hoyu mechamen merav yem They had these bars of metal that they would heat up from before Yom Kippur and then matilin l'toich tzainon they would place it into the cold water k'day shetofit tzinosan in order to take away, to weaken the coldness of the water. So the Gemara asks on this, Is this allowed to be done in Yom Kippur? V'haloi mitzaref By doing this, he's strengthening the metal. What happens? What's the nature of metal? When you have it in, in, hot, in hot and it's very, very hot and you heat it up and then afterwards you place it into cold water, it strengthens the metal. <coughs> so that you're not allowed to do that on Shabbos or in Kippur. It, it could be like Makkeb you're like strengthening it. So how could you do this? Amarav Beivai, Surav Beivai says, no, what we're speaking about over here is Shaloi Higia Litsirov. It wasn't heated up enough that if you put it into the cold water, it's going to strengthen it. It was heated up, but not enough that this will happen. So therefore, it's not an issue. Abai Omar, Abai answers, You could even say that the case of here is that it got so hot that it does get, uh, the tziruf, it will become strengthened when you put it into the water. So this would be something which is forbidden to be done really on Shabbos Yom Kippur. But what's the reason why it's allowed? Because it's not being placed into the water for this purpose, he's putting it to cool off the water. He's having no kavana whatsoever that that should happen. So the rule is that when you do a malacha on Shabbos or Yom Tov or here Yom Kippur, and you're having no kavana for this to happen, it's allowed. And therefore they can place it into the water. So the Gemara asks on this, but umi omar abaya hachi, the rabbi say that when you do a malacha and you're having no kavana that it's allowed, but Vatanya, we learned in Abraise, Besar or Losoi, that it says regarding uh, the, the mitzvah of Brismila, that you have to remove the Arla. So, what, why does it say the extra word of Besar? Even if it's a case where a person has a nega in that area where he has to remove the basar of the bris, yakut, nevertheless, the mitzvah of the bris pushes off the iser of cutting off a nega, and you cut it off, you have to do the mitzvah of the bris. This is how Rabbi Yeshi understands this pasik. The question was asked on this drasha, why do I need a pasik to teach me that you're allowed, to, or that you're obligated to, to, to make the bris, even though you're cutting off the nega? So what's the question? You're not having any kavana to do the iser. This is a case of Einim Miskaven. You're not interested in cutting off your nega. You're interested in doing the bris. The nega comes off automatically. So then what do I need a pasik for this? Omar Abaye and Abaye answered, Le Rabbi Yehuda, the reason why I need the pasik is according to Rabbi Yehuda. The Omar, Rabbi Yehuda's opinion is, Dova she'ei Miskaven Osir. Even when you do a malacha and it's not Miskaven, or you do a Isr, and you're having no kavana for that Isr to happen, but the Isr happens, you're still not allowed to do it. This is the famous Machloikis that's brought Misach the Shabbos many, many times, the Machloikis of Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Shimon, <coughs> regarding Adav Shei Miskavin. And Rabbi Yehuda's opinion is that Adav Shei Miskavin is forbidden. 
So we see over here that Abaya is interpreting this Pasuk, Bisar or Losai, according to Rabbi Yehuda's opinion. So if so, we see that Abaya held like Rabbi Yehuda, that Adav Hashem is is not allowed. So how can we say that Abaya said that uh, when you put the metal into the cold water, that it's not an issue because it's, he's not having Kavana to be of it, to strengthen it. So the Gemara answers, Han imili, when does Abaya say that Adav Hashem is is an issue? B'chol ha kula, in all of Teireh. Rashi says that the meaning of kol ha kula means by a iser de iraisa, when you're doing something which is oser min ha-teira. Tesis actually he br- here brings that Rashi is guidance in the Gemara, hanimili bi isura de iraisa. If it's a iser min ha then it's something where I say that a dovish ha-imiskaven is not allowed. But over here, aval hacha tziruf de rabbananhu. Over here, this tziruf, we're not talking about a kind of tziruf that is asam and atayra. This is a tziruf which is only asam and rabbanon. So because it's only asam and rabbanon, in such a case, Abai will say that a dovish ein miskaven is going to be mutter. Only by asam and atayra does he paskin like Rabbi Yehuda that a dovish ein miskaven is not allowed, but not by asam and rabbanon. That's Rashi's pshat in the Gemara. Tasis, however, has a different pshat here in the Gemara. There's a very long tasis, as you can see over here. The tasis discusses this whole subject. The pshat that Tasis says in the Gemara is that the Gemara answers that Abaye does hold like Rabbi Yehuda, that Adovish Eim Eskavin is not allowed, as we see the drasha that he says over here. But what the Gemara is saying is, even though it's not allowed in Minat Teira, so the issue is only Minat Teira. But Midrabonon, the, 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 the problem, what the Gemara is saying is that according to Abaya, the problem of Dovish Eim Eskavin is only Midrabonon. It's going to be awesome with Rabbanon. And therefore, the klal in the base of Mikdash is, ein shvus be Mikdash. Right? There's no isim with Rabbanon in the base of Mikdash. That's what the Gemara was saying over here. When Abai said, right, the Lashon of Abai in the Gemara, that uh, over here it's a Dovah Sheh Miskavin. What Abai was saying is, a Dovah Sheh Miskavin is mutam in but it's awesome with Rabbanon. And in the base of Mikdash, there's no isim with Rabbanon. It doesn't apply. And on that, according to Teisvis, the Gemara asks the question, but if you're telling me that the issue of Adovish Eim is Gavin is only with Rabbanon, so then why are we using this Drasha Besar or Losoi in a case where it's Adovish Eim is Gavin? If it's only an Isim with Rabbanon, how could you explain a Posik which is speaking about an Isim and Ateira if the whole thing is only Asim with Rabbanon? And on that, according to Teisvis, the Gemara answers, Hanemili b'chol ha kula, what the Gemara is saying is that b'chol ha kula, a dova she'em is going to be oser even min ha Shabbos, the melachas of Shabbos are different, because by the melachas of Shabbos, there's the rule of meleches machsheves. The Taira only asks something where a person has specific intention to get this Malachat done. So the Chiddush of Abaye, the Davish Eim is Kavan, is also only Mid Rabbanon, is specifically Benegayat to Shabbos, where it's required to be a Malachas Machsheves. But Benegayat to all other Isurim, Abaye will agree, like Rabbi Yudah's opinion, that even a Davish Eim is Kavan will be awesome in a Taira. That's basically the Pshat of Taisvis in the Gemara. There's a huge discussion here in Taisvis. Another big point that Taisvis discusses is the concept of psik reishe. Psik reishe means even when it's something where you have no kavana, but if the iser is definitely going to happen, so then even if you didn't have kavana, it's going to be aser. So over here in this case, you're putting this bar of metal into the water, even if you have no kavana, but it's definitely going to be mitzarev. It's going to cool off and it's going to strengthen the metal. So what's the point of saying that it's a miskaven if it's psik reishe? So Taisa says two answers. One answer Taisa says is that over here we must be talking about a case that it's not Psyk Reisha. That it's, it's hot but it's not, it's not definite that it's going to get uh, strengthened by this. It's, it's on the next Omer they're writing the Taisa. Ah, that's that the, the huh? No, but in the first head it's the Gemara saying that it's for sure not going to be Mitzdarev. He Here it's saying even if it would be Mitzdarev but it's still not Psyk Reisha. Another answer Taisa brings which is a famous Teretz of the Oruch the Aruch says that Psik Reisha in a case where you don't want the Malacha to happen, you're having no Hadna of that Malacha, even if it's Psik Reisha, it's still not us. Even if it's for sure going to happen, but if you're having no Hadna of it whatsoever, so then there's no issue of Psik Reisha. Here, when this metal strengthens, you have no Hadna of that. You're not interested in the metal strengthening. You want the water to take away the chill of the water. So therefore, the Psik Reisha is not an issue. And then there's a whole Arichas and Taisis here regarding this subject of Psik Reisha. Okay, so I mean, we, we, we get away over here because of this massive Taisis of having less Gemara, so a little bit we have to know what Taisis says. You know, it's not, you can't be potable like Klum Okay, let's go to the next Mishnah. Why can't you put cold water? 
to put hot, hot into the cold water. I guess this is much easier. It's easier. I mean, they could heat up hot water. I mean, this no, is, I guess, uh, uh, huh? yeah, I, I guess this is easier. Pouring hot water into cold water, there's different case, cases how you could do it or not. But usually you say, Tatagov, or maybe it would be possible, but this is how they did it. I guess this was easier. So, the Mishnah, the next thing that they did with the Kayan Godel. So, the, the previous Mishnah spoke about the beginning of the day when he went to the mikveh and he started with the carbon tomid and so on. Now we go to the next thing. After he finished with the, with the ketaydes and the minayda and the tomid, which was the basic aveda that was always done every day, now they brought him to the pesa parve, to the room which was called pesa parve, because that's where the mikveh was. So this was in the Azara, in a holy place. And They spread out a curtain of linen between him and the people. And there, Kiddush, Yodav, Raglov, so according to the first opinion, so the first thing is he washes his hands and feet, and then Uposhat, then he undressed, and, th- and then he went to the mikveh, and he got dressed again, and he washes his hands and feet again, as we learned this earlier in the Gemara. So by the way, the Gemara is later going to say, because was, the question was asked a few days ago, usually you wash your hands and feet from the kir. But if you hear it saying that he washes his hands and feet after they put a curtain, he didn't wash his hands from the kir. They brought him a basin with, uh, with water over there to wash in that area. He did not wash it from the kir. The Gemara is going to later speak about it. Rab Meir, Rab Meir says the order of when he washed his hands and feet are different. First, Pashat, he got undressed. Then, Kiddush Yod Aglov, he washes his hands and feet. And then, Yorad Vetoval, he goes to the mikveh. Olav in his topic, he comes up and he dries himself, and then if you like big day love on now, they bring him the white garments that he's going to be using to go inside the Besamikdash. Lava, she gets dressed, and after that again, the Kiddush Yad of Raglov, he washes his hands and feet again. We learned the whole Sugi before where the Gemara brought Sukim that he washes his hands and feet twice. Now the Gemara says an interesting thing regarding the white garments, the quality of the white garments. Bashachar, Hayulavish, Plusin, Shoshneim, Osarmana. He would wear white garments that came from a country called Plusin, and it was, it, the value of it was 12 mana. It was a very good quality of white garments. Then Arbayim, then in the afternoon, he also wore white garments for the Aveda later in the afternoon to take out the, the Ketairis from inside the Kedesh HaKedoshim, but those were Handuyin. It was from a different place, from a place called Handuyin, which Rashi says is Eretz Kush, maybe this is India, Handuyin. And it was Shoshmaina Meya Zuz. And the value of that was 800 Zuz. It, wasn't, it was less valuable, it wasn't as good as a quality. Divrei Rab Meir. That's Rab Meir's opinion. Chachamim Maimrim. The Chachamim say different. Bishachar in the morning, Hayyuloive Shoshmaina Samana. And what he wore in the morning, the value of it was more. Not 12, but 18 mana. Or Ben Arbaim. And in the afternoon, Shoshneim Samana. What he wore in the afternoon was of 12 mana. And then he says, Hakail, the total of the value of what he wore in the morning and afternoon is Shloishim Mana. Is 30 mana. Then the Mishnah says another din, Elo Mishal Tzibur. This is all the value of, of what the, the quality of the white garments are supposed to be when it's brought from the Tzibur. It has to be prepared from the money of the Tzibur. But Vimratza, if the Kayan wants, Lohaisif, to add to the quality of these white garments, Maisif Mishalai, he can add more money in order for the quality of it to be even better. Zakta Gemara, my Parve. What's this name of Parve? That this, this lishka, this chamber is called parve. Om Rav Yasef, Rav Yasef says, parve is an amgusha. Our pa- parve was actually a person that was a sorcerer, a kishifmacher. And this, uh, that's what Rashi here says. And he was the one that built this chamber. The, the Rishayim said he was actually a yid. And he was, uh, he was a person that did kishif. And he built this room and therefore was called parve. In Taisus, he brings another interesting pshat from the Aruch. He says what happened was, there was this individual that dug a cave under the Beis Hamikdash because he wanted to come into the place that's holy to see the Aveda of the Kayan Gadol. And he was detected. The Kayan him saw where he dug and they found him. And because of this incident, his name was parve. And because of this incident, they called the chamber with this name of parve because of the, the story that happened. Okay. Huh? Before had something else in the I don't think so. I don't think it had an explanation for the name before. No. Parsu sadden shall boots. They spread a curtain of linen. My shno shall boots. Why a linen uh, curtain? Omer Avkane. Kadei she yakish aveda sayem be big day boots. In order to remind you that the aveda, the special aveda of today, is done with linen. The next thing is said in the Mishnah Bashachar Ayelevish Plus and Shoshmain Arsavachulu. So it said, according to the Chachamim, that the garments in the morning, the white garments, so in the morning the value is 18 mana, 
and the one he wears in the afternoon, the value is 12 mana. But then the Mishnah doesn't stop there. The Mishnah says, and the total value of both of them is 30 mana. So the Gemara asks on that, Vitana minyona osa the Tana is telling me how to count, how to add up the 18 and the 12, that it's together 30. Why does it have to say the total number? It's obvious. And it says the Gemara, Ha Kamashmala. This is what the Tana is coming to say. The Batzer Mahani Loi Navid. Less than this value do not make the garments of the Kayan Gadol. Ha i Batzer Mahani. However, if you want to take off from the value from, let's say, the morning garments, it was supposed to be 18, you want to make it less, you want to make it of 16, mone, vetofi ahani, and you want to then add to the value of the afternoon one, instead of it being from 12, let's say it'll be from 14, less lumbo, it doesn't matter, as long as the total number will be the value of 30. That's why the Mishnah adds that total number of 30, that you can change the value if you want, as long as it comes to the total of the number of 30. The Gemara says, the Kula al Mimis, there's an argument here in the Mishnah, exactly what the value of the garments of the morning and the afternoon has to be, but everybody agrees, the Shachar Adifi, that the ones in the morning, the white garments wore in the morning, have to be from a better quality. Minalon, from where do we know this? So he says, the Pasik says, if you look there in the Pasik, when it speaks about the, the, the white garments that are worn in the morning from linen, it says four times, bad, 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 bad. Four different times it says the word bad. So from why does the title repeat it again and again? Mufcher bebad. It's telling you that you should use the very best quality of linen for the garments. The Gemara asks on this. Meisvei. But we learned in Abraai said that it says as follows. Or actually this is from a Pasik. This is a Pasik in Yecheskel. Rashi here brings the whole Arichas of the Pasik. The Pasik there. If you look at the uh, first, uh, third line of Rashi. He says. That the Kayan Gadol goes inside, and you don't wear any wool then. It's speaking about Yom Kippur. Even though in the Pasuk it doesn't explicitly say that it's speaking about Yom Kippur, but it says that he's not wearing woolen garments. So it has to be speaking about Yom Kippur, because every Rashi says every day of the year the garments does have uh, wool. And then after that it says, Then he comes out, he takes off those garments. And that, that's the Pasuk that the Gemara quotes here. He puts on other garments. Changes from the white garments that he used in the, in the morning to other white garments in the afternoon. And the people should not be Mekadish, this, this clothing, so, so the Gemara's diak over here is with the word achedim, my love. What does this mean? That he puts on other garments. Achedim, chshuva man. Don't you think it means that in the morning he wore the white garments, but then he comes out later and he puts on other garments. Why is the Pasuk emphasizing other garments? That they should be even from better quality. So I see from here that the garments worn in the afternoon should be better garments, more than the morning. So the Gemara answers, no, not necessarily. The ones that are worn in the afternoon are actually, Achedim is telling you that it should be other, that it's inferior quality, not better quality. And Rashi explains, why is this taka the case? Why is the kind wearing in the afternoon garments that are not as good quality as the morning? Usually we have a cloud, Mailam He's supposed to go up better. So Rashi explains, because the Aved in the morning is where you're placing the Ketairis there. It's a much more Choshev Aved. It's covered for the Ebishter that you're putting it there. But then in the afternoon, so you're taking it out. You're going back in to take out the Ketairis. So therefore, that's not as much as a Kavid, and that's not, not, not as much as an important Aved. So therefore, the quality of the garments are less. After you complete doing the Aveda of the Tzibur, which was inside, a Kayan that his mother prepared for him, the Ksainas, he can wear it, and he could do the Aveda of the Yachid. Rashi actually says, what does Aveda's Yachid mean? So Rashi brings two pshatim, but the, the pshat that Rashi says is, Avedis Yachid refers to taking out the Ketairis from the Kedesh HaKedoshim. Avedis Tzibur refers to when you put it inside. Avedis Yachid is when you take it out. Since it's not as important as an Aveda for the Tzibur, so the Gemara refers to this as an Avedis Yachid. Ubulvat, however, the Gemara adds, the truth is this Aveda is not really an Aveda mamish for a Yachid. Even this Aveda is also for the purpose of the Tzibur. That Ksainas that he'll be using, that his mother privately made for him, she has to give it away completely to belong to the Tzibur. It can't be privately owned. 
So the Gemara asks on that, Pshit, uh, it's obvious that this should be allowed. If anyone wants to donate something and give it to be used, to be worn by the Kohen Gadol, why not? So the Gemara says, because I would think, I would be concerned maybe that she's making it and she wants to retain her private ownership and she's not really fully giving it over for the tzibur. <coughs> That's the chiddush here that we're not concerned and she can uh, make it and it could be used for the avayda of taking out the kaf and the machta, which on one hand is considered to be sort of an avaydas yachid, it's not as important as a regular avaydas tzibur, but it still has to be uh, belonging to the tzibur when this avayda is done. The Gemara now brings here different interesting cases where this happened. Omru Allah wa Rabbi Shmuel ben Pabi, he was a kohen gadol. Shasasala imay, his mother prepared for him. Akesaynes shall mayamana, such an expensive <coughs> garment, uh, the, the shirt that was made from linen, that it was worth a hundred mana. And the shah, and he wears it. The oivid ba avedis yachid, and he he does the aveda that is called an avedis yachid. Umaisra litzibur. And his mother has to give it over completely that it belongs to the tzibur. Another case, which was even more amazing, Omru Allah wa Rabbi Laza ben Kharsim. They said about Rabbi Laza ben Kharsim, which was also a kind, and he was very, his family was very, very rich. His mother made him a garment, a ksaynes, mishtei ribay, from 20,000 mana. However, his brothers, the kainim, did not allow him to wear this ksaynes, because it was see-through. He looked, looked, like, looked like undressed when he was wearing it. So the Gemara asks, how is that possible? It's made from linen. Is it possible that, it's, that, it's, that you could see through it? But the Master said, It was a thick garment. It was made with the, each strand was doubled with six, six times. So how could you say that uh, it was see-through? Amar Abaya, Abaya said, yeah, it's possible. It was just like wine in a glass. The glass is see-through. This quality of linen was such a superior, some kind of a quality linen that was so expensive that it was, it was a see-through. So therefore, they didn't allow him to wear this uh, garment on Yom Kippur. Tan Rabbanon, we learned in Abraisa. Now, in connection to Rabbi Lazib and Kharsan that was brought over here, so the Abraisa says the following. Oni v'asher v'rasher bo'en l'din. A poor man, a rich man, and a rasha all come to the court case, which we're referring to over here is in the din after 120 lamaila, on the bezin shalmaila. La'ani ya'imirim lai, to the poor man, the, the Abishta says, Mipnei ma'lai asakta betayra, why didn't you learn tayra? So im oimir ani, if the poor man answers, ha'yisi v'tarad bim zainaisai, I was so preoccupied with trying to make a living. Aimrim Lai, the Abish will respond to him, Klomani Ayisa Yesa Mihilal. Were you poorer than Hilal? And Hilal learned Taita. Amru Alab al Hilal Azakin. It was said about Hilal Azakin Shibhal Yaim Vyaim every single day. Hay Aisa Mistake bit traffic. He only made the amount of money he made was it was a traffic, which is a kind of coin. Rashi says it's a sell a medina, it's a half a dinner, it's very little money. That's all his money was. And what did he do with this money? Half of his daily income he would give to the guard standing over there by the Bismadrish that didn't allow you in unless you paid him. And the other half he gave for his sustenance and for his family. So once it happened, he didn't make any money that day. And the guard at the Bismadrish did not allow him to enter. Allah, so he went onto the roof, Vinitla, the Yashav Api Aruba. And he went and he suspended himself or he positioned himself on top of the skylight. In order to have the ability to hear the Taita that Shmaya and Avtalian were teaching. Amru, they said, what happened? This day was on an Ed of Shabbos. And it was in the middle of the Tkufa of Tevis, the middle of the winter. And it snowed on him. And then he remained there under the snow. And then when the morning star came up, Omar lo Shmaya la Avtalian, Shmaya tells Avtalian, Avtalian, Achi, Avtalian, my brother, every, time, every day at this time, the house, the Bismedrish is light. And today it's dark. Maybe it's a cloudy day today. They picked up their eyes and they took a look. And they rode Baruba and they saw the image of a man there in the skylight. Alu, they went up to the rooftop, Umatsu Alav, and they found on top of him Raim Shalish Amis Shalek, the height of three Amis of snow, which is about what uh, five five feet of snow, a lot of snow on top of him. 
Parakuhu, they released them, they, they saved them from there. and they washed them off. Vesichuhu, and they, they anointed them. And then Veshivu Keneged Hamadura, and they put him near the fire. And they said, Omru, Roy Zel, He's befitting to be Machal Shabbos on him to, to save his life. Right, so what the, the Mufarshim ask on the, this is the conclusion of the story here. The Mufarshim ask on the conclusion of the story. Why does the Gemara say Roy Lachal all of us a Shabbos, which is Mashma only him? Could you be Machal Shabbos, but not anyone else? So the answer, two answers. One answer is that he was in such a bad condition that it didn't even seem like it's possible to save his life, Bachlal. So in a regular situation, it wouldn't even be worth to try, Bachlal. It seemed like he wasn't even had no sign of life. But they said, a person like Hillel, definitely he's befitting that Abish will make a nest and we should do whatever we can to save his life because certainly the Abish will, will save his life. Another pshat they say is that the situation that Hillel placed himself in, he was a Peshaya. He, was, he literally killed himself. He took his own life. So in such a situation, a person goes and takes his own life, not necessarily would you be obligated to be Mechal Shabbos to save his life. But nevertheless, they said, no, that uh, he knew that the nest will happen to him and therefore he's not a Peshaya and therefore he's fitting to be Mechal Shabbos to save his life. Now this is, so this is a story with Hillel. So nobody could say if they're poor <laughs> that they can't learn Taita. And then, Asher a rich man that says, that they, they say to him, Why did you not learn Taita? So if he answers, Asher Yisi, I'm so rich, I was so busy with all of my possessions, taking care of everything. So the Bezn Shomayla says to him, Oh, you richer than Rabbi Lazar ben Kharsim? Omru Allah al Rabbi Lazar ben Kharsim. It was said regarding Rabbi Lazar ben Kharsim. She niach lay aviv. His father left him. Elef ayares by Yabasha. A thousand different countries or cities in the dry land. A connection and corresponding to them. Elef sfinis by yam. A thousand ships on the water. Extremely rich. But nevertheless, every single day, he took a, uh, a jug of flour on his back, on his shoulders. He would go from city to city, from country to country, to go find who to learn Taita with, or to, to learn Taita from. Pamachas, one time it happened, Matsu Avadov, one of his hit, one of his servants of his cities found him. They didn't know they were his servants, and Vaosuboy Angaria. And they went and they took him to, to work for them. Angaria means when you when you when you have to work for the government. And they didn't realize who he was. He's really the owner of all of these lands. Omar Lahan, he says to them, Michem, I ask of you, Anichuni, leave me. Let me go learn Taira. Amrulai, so they answered him, Chaye Rabbi Lazar ben Chasim, and we swear in the name of Rabbi Lazar ben Chasim, which is our, our landowner, She'ein Manicha Noisach, we don't allow you to go. And he didn't, he said, they didn't, they had never met him, they never knew who he is because he, was, he always just went and learned Taita. He did not at all take care of any of his properties, he had someone else that took care of it. There's another Girsi here on the side that actually says, Holach Nosel and Mom and Harbe Kadeshi and Nichawaisai. So he, he didn't disclose that he's Rabbi Lazim Kharsim. He paid them off a lot of money so they should leave him to go and learn Taita. That's, so that's the story of Rabbi Lazim Kharsim. He never in his times, in his days, went to see his servants, so they, they, they should know who he is. He sat and learned Taita day and night. Now, the third individual, Russia, a Russia that's not learning Taita, the Bezan Shalmail says to him, Why didn't you learn Taita? So um, Omar, if he's going to respond and say, No, I was so beautiful and therefore I was preoccupied with my Yitzhahara that was distracting me. We say to him, Were you more beautiful than Yosef? It was said regarding Yosef Atzadik, Every single day, the wife of Patifa would try to seduce him. The garments that she wore to attract him in the morning, she didn't wear that in the evening, she changed her garments. Then the garments what she wore that evening, she didn't wear that in the, in the following morning, she changed again. She constantly tried to seduce him. She said to Yosef, listen to me. 
Omar Allah, he responded to her, no, laugh, no. Omar Allah, she said to him, I'm going to get you in prison. Omar Allah, so he responded to her, it doesn't matter, Hashem Matra Surim, the Abishu will release me. She said, I will, I will uh, bend your, your uh, stature, meaning she will, she'll hit him, she'll cause him pain. So, so he, did, he said, Hashem Zaykif Kafufim, the Abishu will make me stand straight. I'll blind you. Hashem So Yosef said, Hashem will make me see. So she tried in every way possible to, to, to get him. She gave him a thousand silver coins to be with her. And he did not want to be with her. And the Gemara says, what does this mean? To be with her in this world. To be with her in the world to come. And so we see even a person like Yasef that had such a kind of an Isaiah, such a kind of Yetzahara, he was able to withstand it. So therefore, every person has to also learn from this. So the Gemara concludes, Nimtze Hillel Machayev Esaniyim. Hillel obligates all poor pe- people to learn Taira. Rablazab Mancharsim. Machayev Esashirim. Rablazab Mancharsim. Is, it obligates all rich people to learn Taira. And Yasef, Machayev Esar Rishayim. And Yasef is Machayev all Rishayim to, to, to overcome their Yetzahara. The Rebbe says regarding this Gemara, what are we talking about over here? Are we talking about a person that has time to learn Taira? Or doesn't have. If he has time, why do you have to learn from Hill or from Rabbi Laza and Charsim? You have time, learn. Elamai, you don't have time. So what are you learning from Rabbi Laza and Charsim and Hill? He does not have time. How can he learn from them? Elamai, the Rebbe says, the Pshad and the Gemara is, we're talking about a person that I'll pee Taita, he's Pata from learning. Because he, whether he's too poor or he's too rich and he's busy with other things, and I'll pee Din, he's Taka Pata. But nevertheless, when a person has a real deep geschmack and interest in learning, even though he's potter al pidin, he'll find time to learn Taita. And that's the limit that we're learning out from Hillel and Rabbi Lazim and Kharsim and so on.